Hello, very good afternoon. Um, I myself am Dr. Pradeep from Kerala. At present, I am, I am working as an associate professor in education and experimental science, as well as an implant division head in the in a private commercial lab by name is Natural Dental Lab situated in Kerala. So the topic for the day is digital workshop in implant dentistry. On the onset, I would like to thank the WDA platform for giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge on this topic. So on, on, the, on straightforwardly, I'll, I'll, let me get into the topic, the digital workflow in implant dentistry. I, this topic may be a new one. I'm keeping myself very, very basic for the freshers or people who have never gone into this digital digital thing to get accustomed to it. It is a, a very, I've kept myself very, very basic. So that is the, the topic for the day is a digital workflow in implant dentistry. So this is about myself, I'm Pradeep from Kerala. Okay, the first question is, we are already doing implants and why should we go digital and all, um, why should we incur all the all the expenses to to get this to get this on to get this going so on the onset i'll tell let, let me tell you this digital thing is really very fast compared to your conventional con compared to your conventional procedures of doing implants and not only fast it's also accurate enough so we can get this implant in place accurately and it's also very safe from all your vital structures and not only safe, it is also very convenient. Convenient not only for the dentist, it's also for the patients. Also, it's really convenient and also it's reliable. All these things, the list is endless. It goes on and on and on. So, so my the my this webinar, this talk goes. I'll go on the topic wise first. I'll get into the diagnosis. Then I'll then I'll then I'll give briefly. I'll talk to you, talk to you about the planning. How do we plan it? Then how do we execute the planned version? How do we execute it onto the patient? And then a small insight. I'll be I'll be just giving a small insight on how do you fabricate the processes. Okay. So the first on the first we'll go on to the diagnosis portion. First, in the conventional in the conventional type of implantology, we always we use, we used to take our diagnostic cast. And we used, we used to do a mock-up. The same are used when we're going into digital also. The same goes on. But we have a new instrument called as intraoral scanner. I think you are well versed with it. So intraoral scanner, with the help of intraoral scanner, we have the virtual cast on your computers. We take the virtual cast. On this virtual cast, we get several informations. What are the informations first? One is your the occlusion of the patient. The, what, the, what, are the, what, are, what are the problems in the occlusion? We get its proper data about it. Not only that, we can also get the inter the inter arch relationship of the arches, where is the space, where is the proper space is present or not, and also the angulation of the adjacent tooth, the natural tooth angulations. So, getting all these informations will give us a prime a preliminary information of your treatment plan. So, gaining all these gaining all these informations, we can we can plan the treatment. That is, we can go in for the diagnostic wax up. In conventionally, we had a diagnostic cast, you should go for a mock up. But in the digital, we are going into a called as a diagnostic wax up. What is diagnostic wax up? It is nothing but in the conventional, they used to have this wax, the lab people used to place the tooth and place the waxes and give us a mock up how it looks like. And we used to show this mock up to the patient and convince the patient. But we have an additional tool in your in your dental in your digital thing that is your diagnostic wax that is with the help of certain softwares like smile designing softwares we can have this we can do a digital wax up on the intraoral scan which are the virtual cast which we have on our computers with the help of this the, with the help of this um, uh, software the digital the smile designing software we can do a digital wax up and this digital wax up can be merged onto your facial photos, which is available, which which can which can be procured, and which can be merged on, and we can have we can we can get that final result of the final result. So this the this the final result we can show it to the patient and convince the patient for this treatment plan. So for the for this treatment, so the patient will have a proper knowledge and how it how the how, how will they look. After the treat, uh, after the complete treatment, that is, this is very advantageous when in this, in the, especially in your, in your anterior segment, especially in your anteriors when you're going for anterior, anterior 
the processes, this will be an added advantage. By this, not only the patient, it is really helpful for the dentist also. So the dentist can have a clear cut information. How, what are the patient expectations? What are the expectation of the patient? Okay, and if there is any alteration in the wax up, the, the, the patients will let you know and you can accordingly modify it. And by all by doing all this, we can have a proper, we can come to a proper treatment plan and, uh, stating that how many implants to be used, where to use. All these data can be procured by this diagnostic wax up. And this is a very important tool in our, in our practices. Coming on, next, this is the initial, this is the initial step. Then coming on to the next one, that is in the normally in conventional module, we always, till now we were always, till now we did with the proper radiograph, we used to take radiographs of the patient, we used to take the cast of the patient, we do the mock-up, and we do the, some ridge mapping, age-old technique, age-old technique, we now greatly we practice the ridge mapping, and all these, that was a conventional module we practiced. But coming on to the digital side, anyway, we need some digital data. But what are the digital data we need? One is your CBCT. CBCT is the main data which we need, and the scan of the model or the intraoral scan. These are the two data that we need for the partially edentulous cases. Coming on to the edentulous full mouth rehab cases, there's a slight alteration. One is we need the CBCT data with the processes in place, with the, pro with the patient wearing the process, we need to take the CBCT. Apart from that, we need the CBCT data of only the processes. So these are the slight variations. I'll come, I'll come, I'll, I'll briefly explain the, in the further slides. First one, first data, as I have already told you, first data that is a CBCT data that has to be, the, that is a prime thing. We need it in the DICOM format. Whenever we send the, uh, send the patient for CBCT, it is always advised it, uh, the scan centers to take the CBCT with a white block in place. If not, there will be an overlapping of the truth and it will be a problematic when you design it, when you plan it up in your software. So always it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is best when you take it with the patient having a bite block in his mouth. Okay. Then if the patient and two, as we know, the cost is more when you send to the CBCT centers, when you take a whole mouth CBCT, it takes it really cost more. Suppose if they, if we are doing only in the maxillary arch or doing only in the mandibular arch, the respective arch CBCT is more than sufficient for us going for a digital. Okay, coming on, that is the first data which I told you, that is the CBCT data. The second data is either if we have, if the, if the dentist as if the dentist as an intraoral scan intraoral scanner then the, pay, the then the dentist can go with intraoral scan data can be sent to the can be sent to the can can be sent to the either to the lab or you can have you can take it in the, into, into the into the software if the if the dentist doesn't have an intraoral scanner, even the model can be sent to the lab, and the, and this model can be scanned up using with an using as in extraoral scanner, and the and the and the file that we get from the extraoral scanner, the STL file, that can also be sent or that can be also taken into the software. So there is nothing to worry about. The dentist, I don't have an intraoral scanner. I cannot go with this. No, either you can go with a model scan also. Otherwise, there are very few. There are several companies presently available wherein you need all the all, all the thing. What you do is you need to send in the CBCT data, your treatment plan, as well as your model to the company. The company plans it, does everything, and sends back to you. So this is also an option. By this thing, you do not. There is no any investment to be done. So you can practice digital implant dentistry now. That is about your the second data which I was talking about. That is your scan data or intraoral scan data. That is in that that is in respect to your partially edentulous arch for your for your partial for, for your partial cases. When you're coming in the main thing you need in this case in the in these patients is I you need the processes in place, the complete denture processes in place. If the patient is in complete denture processes wearer, then there is no any problems. You can directly add five to six markers on the processes and ask the patient to wear this processes and go for a CBCT scan. So the CBCT center will scan the patient with the processes in place, the first scan. 
and we need one more scan of the patient of, of the uh, one more scan that is the just the prosthesis scan is needed okay that is the second suppose again a question mark that is if the patient is not having the prosthesis what to what should be done in such cases if the patient is not having the complete denture what we can do is we can fabricate a denture base for the patient and an occlusal rim the occlusal rim has to be customized for the patient that is the jaw relation has to be done for the patient and over the denture bases that is known onto the flange area we can add five six markers throughout that is on one side, we need to have always almost around three markers. On the other side, on the next quadrant, we need to have around three markers. So replace around six or seven markers on the denture basis. And as the patient to wear these occlusal rims and go for the scan. So this is the first data. Second data is the prosthesis. That is the, that is the CDCT of the prosthesis has to be taken. So when so care has to be taken over here, when the when when the, when this has been taken. That is the processes should be kept over the foam, over the foam with the occlusal surface of the processes directed towards the foam. It should be placed over it and the CBCT has to be taken. The CBCT, the radiation will be less. The CBT centers will be knowing that. And this is the second data that has to be needed for, a, for planning an edentulous case. That's about your, your data is required for the first initial data required for your digital planning and the next thing is your after getting all these datas we need we need one more one more equip one more uh, uh, aid that is your planning softwares presently there are there are a number of softwares presently in the market in these softwares of some are, are, are uh, uh there are there's a chargeable software and some are free softwares in the market there's the free softwares are easily downloadable like the blue, blue sky blue sky bio implant stations guide me all these are free softwares and there are some paid softwares like so like free shape exocad interware all these are paid softwares so any software for the for that matter we need three data presently to plan this up one is your cbct scan in the dicom format the next one is your surface scan, that is STL format, that is nothing but your intraoral scan or your the other model which are sent to the lab in the STL format, which you get that, 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 that we call it a surface scan or an, uh, in an STL format, that is the second data which we need. The third data is the treatment plan. We need to come to an RIV and treatment plan, either we need either the dentist itself, we, itself are planning it, we need the treatment plan, or we, if the lab is planning it, we need to send the treatment plan to them. So these are the three data that is mandatory to go for this planning software so i'll just go the i'll show you the steps how we plan it in the planning software i am i generally use three shapes so i'll go with three shape any software as well it is, is good in this in this case even a blue sky bio is an excellent software in plus station anything is good so i'll just i'll just go with three shape because i regularly use them the first step in in any software any software is first step is that is you need to feed in the data that is the initial treatment plan data where is the missing tooth all these data the initial data has to be filled in that is the data acquisition the second thing you as as we say as everybody have heard this implantology is nothing but a prosthetically driven the implant should be prosthetically driven yes exactly that is the reason first we plan in First, we design the restorations with the software. First, the software in the software, we we the, the missing portion, the wherever the indentures, we plan the prosthesis first. And this prosthesis is compliant with all the prosthetic values that we can use in as a, a virtual articulator and do all the corrections and get set up. The prost the restorations are ready. Once the restorations are ready, then all the data that is your that is your cbcd data everything is set of data acquisition itself now we can reduce the cbct data that is we can crop it up just for this for the reason for cropping it up is to the volume the size of the file to decrease the size of the file is the, is, is the reason why we crop it up then that is the second step and the third step is panoramic curve tracing this is done to have a proper panoramic view 
otherwise the panoramic view will be something different so to get a proper panoramic view we need to trace the panoramic curve and then after that after that step 4 will be we need to align the we need to align the two scans which we have got one is your one is your cbct the the data cbc data a second one is your, your stl file or your intraoral intra intra intraoral scan data or your model scan whichever so we need to we need to club these two or we need to stitch these two together that is we also called as an aligning or your scan alignment or your stitching the cast something like that okay so we need to do the aligning this aligning is done we have either in in three shape there is automatically certain times it gets aligned if you're not happy with your with your automatic alignment you can always go for your manual alignment that is you need to place three dots you three areas you need to mark up in the in the in the in the cbct file as well as the same three points the same areas has to be located on to your surface scan or your intraoral scan so once when we do it these scans these points get merged down and this is what we call the stitching the cast or aligning the cast together once it is aligned you can see the color changes you can see you can see the green red all these things this gives you the data whether it is completely aligned or not okay when the green is it's, it gives you it gives you uh, give say uh, signifies it's completely aligned so once it is done we go on to the next step that is the main step that is your nerve tracing here is what we always have a question mark and the dangerous point so we in the in the virtual in the virtual uh, in the virtual planning first we need to mark this nerve that is we call as a nerve tracing okay so we in the in the tangential view whichever view we want we can just roll our cursor and the slices keeps moving down moving down and accordingly we can trace this dot the red dot which we see on the on the screen accordingly behind we can trace it back so all this the the located points joins together and you can see completely the nerve gets traced down this is what this is called as nerve tracing in the software this is this almost same in all the softwares then once we have done it once we have done it now we are we have done everything now we need to virtually place the implants in place so all the softwares in all the even it's a free software or a paid software this virtual this library implant libraries are available for every system all the all the thing we need to do is we need to import the system from that from from their from their website the company website into our softwares either it's a paid or an on a uh, uh, free version this option is available and it is free this implant libraries can be imported onto your softwares whichever you're working on and we can select the implant sizes so each so each company has in separate their 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 entire their, their entire library of implants is uh, present over there and according to that according to the according to the uh, length of the uh, of the bone and the width of the bone the appropriate implant of that company can be selected and placed in place in the desirable place which we are looking on into okay so if you can see this we can around the implant we have a green line running over here in three shape this is this we call it as a safety margin this safety margin can be accustomed according to your thing it may be 1.5 or 2 or whatever we need to keep it we can just keep it up and then place it so that we are at safer end we don't cross we don't penetrate we can't we don't fenestrate the cortex over here so that is what the advantage of having a safety margin like this suppose in in mostly in three shape in most, most of the softwares we, we go out of the we 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 touch the um, nerves or something this will turn to be red that means it gives you a, it it signifies that there is some problem you need to alter your your either you need to reduce you need to reduce the length of your implant or you need to alter your angulation this is what it signifies if it is red so if it is in three shape it it if it is green it's okay if it is good red you need to alter it this this option is there in almost all the softwares so once you are happy with this placement the virtual surgery which we have done or virtual placement of implant which we have done when you are happy with this now we just continue further down so this is an excellent 
this gives you an excellent view because this there is when we are doing when we are doing surgery in the on the surgical table there is no any surprises on the table one thing if we know what are the structures how far we are we are from the structures what are the distance between the cortex not only that we know the exact implant sizes at times when you open it up the bone looks thin and we need to we need to run over to the different sizes all these can be prevented up we have an exact things exact size of the implant exact length everything we we have we have in hand so it is a very good option over here then once we have really satisfied with the implant placement the angulation everything we are satisfied we are next we need to we need we need a guide to get our implants in the exact place as we did in your virtual placement so for this for this we need a guide we need to fabricate a guide that is it is a guide it is a pathway for our drills to enter into the bone or do the osteotomy in the bone so when you are doing it in your in your conventional type when you are doing so we plan all this okay we got we got this now we may go into the patient's mouth and do it the exact we may not be we know we may not be entering the bone in the exact position we may not, we may have our angulation may be different or my angulation may be may be different from the what we had planned virtually so we need a guide to do this that is what the surgical guide fabrication anyway they, for surgical guides anyway is a huge topic surgical guides are around two types of guides one is your tooth supported guide and the tissue supported guide tooth supported guide is nothing but this guide rest on the tooth tissue supported guide is a is a guide that rest on the tissues for example when you have dent when you are in a partial denture cases generally we go in for a tooth supported guides in a complete dentulous case or complete dentulous cases we go in for an we 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 go in for an we go we uh, we, we, we go in for an issue supported guides anyway both are some disadvantages and advantages i'll go I'll, if i if i have time i'll just brief you about that okay so this is the next step once we are happy with the placement of the of the implants of the of the virtual implants we go in for the guide fabrication you know, if you can see a cylinders if you can notice the cylinders or that these are the guide ways for our drill to penetrate into the bone these are with these in the guide we call them as an offset we always try to keep the offset as minimal as possible the reason for that is if the offset is increased intra orally the even the drills the drills the, the length of the drill keeps increasing so we always keep it keep the offset as minimal as possible because when we go into the posterior portion of the of the of the arches the drill to go into the hole it will be a massive task so always we try to keep this offset as minimal as possible and the appropriate drill appropriate length of the drill goes along with it that all the information we get it through the software so this is what is your offset and up then then we then we we go in for something called as a guide planning that is guide planning we keep the we we have you see we have seen the the so the, the stents which we use it is the same way as it so we there's a plate over it onto this plate the cylinder this cylinder which we had which i told you the offset gets fixed to it okay it comes in one piece so this is how it looks like this is what is your guide designing so there's an appropriate offset is there and these are there are certain windows over here i'll tell you what are why are these windows over here and if we keep if we can give some bars over here to just to strengthen the surgical guide so that it never fractures so these are what is your this is what this is what it looks like in your designing part okay once the virtual placement and we have designed it and we the all the softwares even the free software all the softwares generates one report called as an surgical report this is a surgical report wherein if if your lab is is planning this or your company is planning this the surgical report will be sent to the dentist the dentist needs to approve this only after approving this the the lab or the company prints it up prints the surgical guide or if we are if that we dentists are designing it we need to go through the surgical report completely the surgical report one thing one it gives you the sizes of the implants the second it gives you not only size of the implants it gives you the bone quality around the implants 
which is a very 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 good option it gives you the the bone quality of the around the implants can you see this green yellow accordingly it gives you enhanced feels it gives you the bone quality so depending upon this so gathering information from this we can decide either we need to go for an immediate loading or we should stop ourselves with an later loading or this is what with the information we get once we see the surgical report and we are satisfied with this we give an approval for the company or we go ahead with your surgical guide printing till year all the free softwares till year it's free of charge from here on the free software charges up that is once your thing is ready we need to get this guide to print the guide we need a we need a file called as an stl file to print the to, to print the guide to get this stl file from the free software to get this stl file output we need to pay it ranges from around 10 to 15 dollars depending upon each free software but your, your paid software is directly you can pay it out but again the paid software the amount is really huge for your paid software anyway that is your planning part and come on and next thing is after after we have planned it after we have planned it we have got a complete uh, complete knowledge of about the vital structures the bone thickness but everything we have here we have come to we, we have we have we have seen the, in, the, in the virtual planning now we need to execute it onto the patient so we need a guide as i have told you we need a we need, we need a guide so to, so, so for, for one to visualize the potential implant site in 3d in relation to the proposed processes first we need we, we need to go guided because of precise implant placement not only that it's a less risk of compromising the adjacent vital structures not only that when i'll this one i'll tell you in, in the coming slides so the for this execution once we have planned we have planned the we have planned the uh, uh, implants are planned now the stl file is ready to, to get it printed and we print it up using a 3d printer the printing is done and and once it is printed there is a support resin holding this holding this surgical guide so in it has to be cured after printing it has to be cured after curing it we insert the sleeve all the all the supporting resin is cut out and it is and, and it is placed on the cast and it is sent back to the dentist this is your surgical guide so once the dentist gets it that it comes with this drilling protocol so the drilling protocol here this this the piece of information pdf format which we get from the software gives you what and all implant you need to procure what and all is there it's to be taken up and this is the drilling protocol what are the sequence of the kit you follow so one thing each every system of every system which we are going to which which which, which we are doing as in separate drilling guy a drilling kit or a surgical kit designated for their for their surgical guides or for their systems so we need to procure that we need to procure that there are some generic systems also available at present so we need to go with the surgical guide kit designated by the by that company so we need that we get a proper drilling protocol of the of that of that company accordingly we take it up so these guide kits again it can be classified into two types of guide kits that is a surgical guide i have told you i just given information about and this is the guide kits guide kits are of there are two types of guide kits are available presently available one is your semi guided kit the other one is your fully guided kit semi guided kit and a fully guided kit what is semi guided kit and what is fully guided kit yes these are the two kits available presently in the market but i am a big fan of semi guided kit the reason i'll just let you know when i go back go to the next slides semi guided kit is nothing but in this in this guided in this guided system what we do is we do the osteotomy with the guide in place after the osteotomy is done the implant is, the implant is placed without the guide this is what a semi guided kit but a fully guided kit differs at this point that is right from the lansdale or a tissue punch 
till the till the implant goes into the bone it is completely with the guide in place you never remove the guide even the implants are placed with the guide in place so this is the difference between your semi guided kit and your fully guided kit the advantages of both of them i'll just come on with my next slides and there are several kits available certain certain surgical kits have some keys and certain are keyless this key it is a combination of certain keys for only for a uh, pilot drill we keep this key and then place the player then uh, place the uh, pilot drill after the pilot drill this key is removed you can see a handle over here like this this is what we call as a key and certain system doesn't have that key that is it is depend uh, depends upon the company which we are practicing okay this is one such kit which we have which i practice regularly and this is the this is the semi this is a semi guided kit wherein we have these are the lance drills the osteotomy drills the sleeves the punches and the implant implant drivers it is a very simple kit it is very simplified it is it is very easy to to go in and the, the instrumentation is also very less when you go for a fully guided kit the instrumentation is really huge and telling all these things i'll get on to the first case and it will be more it will be more in, it will be more like explanatory for you people that is the first case here and we are planning for a molar molar over here and we are planned it we are planned it in the software i think it's interware we are planned with the software or the nerve was traced and everything the angulation was checked and everything was done over here and the approval was taken by the dentist and we got a drilling protocol available with us okay and this is the drilling protocol and it clearly states which drill to be used and sequence the way which we should go this gives you the drilling protocol always when we do the when we do the surgery it is advisable to keep the drilling protocol handy always you need to check it up you cannot skip from year to year or you cannot skip the drills it has to go sequentially sequentially only then your osteotomy will be proper enough and then this is after after the after the plan was approved by the dentist the this is a guide this is the surgical guide you can see the surgical guide over here you can see a small opening over here this is the call is on window and onto the surgical guide we place a this is a sleeve surgical this is a surgical sleeve, guide sleeve which is this sleeve differs from company to company this totally depends upon the kit which we are going to use so this is the case where the molar is, uh, first molar is missing and can you see this window once we keep first we place the surgical guide onto the tooth and we check in for the adaptation the window is kept for the adaptation so that there is approximation of the plate to the tooth there is no any gap between if there is gap between just hold on stop the treat, uh, uh, stop the surgery and go back and send send it back to the designer and ask him for the print. there are changes can come in the printing machine if the printing machine is not calibrated properly there can be alterations so we need to check that first and then it is placed and then after this is after this is placed then the first drill to go into this is your lance drill or your starting drill that is a lance drill we place the we place a surgical guide on through this hole we pass on our drill the lance drill into it once we pass on to the drill the the best part of this is we can remove the surgical guide from the tooth and and visualize it for our satisfaction we can visualize it is it in the center in the lo on, on the located side and then from there next we can we can place back the guide and put on and introduce our and push in our tissue punch into the hole into the hole then this gives it this cuts the tissue on the bone or here like this once this is done we can just remove this remove the tissues certain systems have the tissue on in the tissue punch itself there is a inner blade which cuts out which cuts out this this piece of tissue from the from the bone but in certain but, but in certain systems we don't have this we just it's a tissue punch normal tissue punch it's just driven into it press into it properly so that and then later with the pedostal elevator you can just flick it up 
and after that after the, after that we can sequentially introduce the drills accordingly to the drilling protocol which is available with us sequentially we can introduce the drills according to the sequence provided by the design or provided by the software once we finish the last drill the twist drill the final twist drill we get a beautiful osteotomy like this without any problems without any cuts here and there a proper a proper osteotomy once we get this it is always mandatory to go do the bone sounding in this introduce some med, some piece of instrument into this and check out to just give it to just be sure that there is bone overall you can do the bone sounding with the instrument properly so that you are sure that there is no any fenestration or there is no any dehiscence around so then once you are confirmed it is very good it's, it's good you just drive in your implant into the osteotomy either you can do either either you can go for a motorized insertion or you can go with your wrench either forms it is well and good the final tightening should be done with your with your surgical wrench once your implant is driven you can place your healing healing cap and send the patient this is what this is how simple it is using your digital it's a boon to us presently this, this technology is a really a boon to us this is i have just give you i, I showed you a case of the a single tooth case when even this is really comes into handy when we are practicing your multiple tooth when you need an exact parallelism for your prosthetic it becomes very easy if the if the implants are placed really parallel in your prosthetic face otherwise it's really difficult if your play if your if your implants are placed angulated it's really difficult to, even for your impression taking also it is really difficult so if your if your implants are really parallel enough it is really good so this really comes into handy when it's in when it's in uh, multiple multiple implant cases so this is one case this is one case where uh, multiple implants of uh, two parallel adjacent implants are being placed okay this in this case the the, the model was sent to us the cbct was sent to us and uh, we took a we took this onto the software and we designed the guide accordingly and we had sent to the dentist and and you can see this you can see that i have just taken this to show the parallelism of the of the implants when you get such parallel implants placed like this it is really a it is really good to see this especially when you're taking your impressions when you open copings suppose it is especially when you're doing your you're placing your uh, open tray copings or your closed tray copings very many times if this angulated this both copings touch each other then you just scratch your heads and saying how to do this yes the all those things can be avoided in this you can have and you can have the implants exactly parallel to each other this is this is the, this is the very good thing of this with the digital with the digital aid okay this is how we do it and then after after the after creating the osteotomy we just remove the surgical guide out and we drive in the we drive in the implants into the osteotomy site and this is the final we place the healing cap and go for delayed loading that is about your partially dentulous you have a single tooth that i have just showed you and i have showed you about the multiple tooth that is in uh, adjacent uh, tooth and one case i would like to share for the completion i would like to share about the edentulous cases edentulous cases i have already told you we need two scan two cbct scans one one scan one cbct of the patient with the prosthesis in place the other one only of the prosthesis so there are slight modifications it may not be the same as we did as i have explained now slight modifications in this but almost it's, it it's goes hand in hand but there are slight modifications i don't want to go along with it because it takes more amount of time so i don't want to go on we have planned it in the software i think this we have planned it this interface software we have planned it we have taken around four four implants over here we have planned it like this okay. yeah and this is the surgical guide as i have told you this is a tissue based surgical guide so it is entirely on the on the tissue so we have play we have planned this using the surface scan of the patient that is on the tissues 
So when we place this, suppose if we place this on the patient directly and press it up, our whole virtual planning, what we have done is go hayward. That is, it, it depresses and the angulation may vary, the depth may vary, all these may vary. So to prevent this, what we what we did is we designed the software, we mounted the cast, upper and the upper, upper and the lower segment, and we placed the surgical guide on the cast, on the cast on the articulator. After placing it on the articulator, we took a bite of this. And we transferred, we gave some demarcation so that it is proper. And after, after doing this, we, we took this bite into the patient's mouth. We, we, placed the, we, we placed this surgical guide and we placed the bite. We aligned it accordingly to the maxilla. This is the alignment. And then we inserted the anchoring pin. These are the anchoring pins. These are the bone anchoring pins. Once we get the position, we position, it will be easily removable because there is no any holding mechanism. So to place in place, what we do is we screw a pin into the bone. That is, we have a small 1.5 mm drill. We pass it on to this. And this, all these are designed in the planning stage itself. All these options are given in the planning stage itself. I'm not going in detail about just I'm giving you a case okay okay and uh, we we with a, with a 1.5 mm drill we drill into the bone and we place this we place this pin called as an anchor pin into it once we place this this becomes immovable this stays in place after that we do all your drilling sequence as i have told you always we keep the drilling protocol handy near the surgical surgical table and we have all of our instrumentations we pass all our instruments accordingly as per the as, as, as per the designer specifications we go along and here we can see the osteotomies we have done because in this case we have just we can go for a flat plate because in this case we have we have cut open we have incised so that to be sure there is no any fenestration because we we because the ridge was very 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 less the size of the ridge was very thin so we we expected a fenestration over there so this this, this is the beauty of this once we we are expecting a fenestration so we expect a fenestration and there was a fenestration once we, we do the osteotomy we can go for a bone grafting in that we can place the implants and then we can graft that area whichever is fenestrated which the a fenestrator which we had already we had we had, we, had, we had and we had in uh, in, in the in the, when during the planning stage itself we were we were knowing that it to be fenestrated over here because the thickness of the bone was very very less in that area so we 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 remove we incised it we we went for a bone grafting in that area and we gave a good beautiful suture over here this is how we did this edentulous case this is how, this is, it's comparatively it is more easier than a conventional technique this is how it went on that is about your semi-guided kit and coming on to the fully guided kit the only difference is here we place this we place the implants freehand only the osteotomy was done with your with your with your surgical guide and your placement of your implant was done freehand onto the into the osteotomy site, right? But in your fully guided kit, that is not the case. In your fully guided kit, right from the start till the till the till the end, we have the guide in place. All your drills and your implants goes through your surgical guide into into the into the bone. So this is the beauty of this system. With this system, with this system, you can also do an immediate restoration. Also, as I have told you, as I have shown you, when during your in our planning stage itself, we had designed the restoration, so that that restoration, watch what what we had designed, can be printed, can be printed, and it can be all it can be milled. Your temporaries can be milled, and accordingly, the abutments can also be milled, milled, and once the place in the implants only there the care has to be taken during this fully surgical guide in a pre-planned abutment and in pre-planned restoration 
the angulation of the abutment should be in place. If the angulation if the angulation of the abutment slightly differs from your virtual planning, your crown, your temporary crown will not go and sit in, in, in place. So the angulation of the abutment is very, very critical over here. For the angulation of the abutment, the head of the implant has to be angulated or the orientation of the implant head has to be proper. It should be same as, that is, as the virtual planning we had done. That is because as we all know, either in all the systems, we have certain anti-rotational feature in all the in all the implant system. Either it is an X or an or an tire or an uh, Mickey, whatever, or in square, everything, anything. So it has to be aligned properly. So this feature is available in the software itself. In the software, you can have certain grooves available in the software itself. It gives you an option of the grooves like this. This grooves align, suppose if there is an X, it this groove aligns with the flat surface of the X. This is what it does the flat surface of the of the implant should be towards the side that is what this signifies and not only this even in the implant driver there is an option in most of the implant drive in all the fully guided implant drivers there is an option like this that there is the option of, on the implant driver there is some markings over us you need to you need to abide with the markings the other these markings everything you'll be having it in your drilling protocol everything each and every instructions will be given by the by the by the software itself okay so you need to align this accordingly you, according according to the according to the groove that has been given over here only then the immediate temporization also can be done so the the main the main advantage of a fully guided kit is immediate temporization can be done the the impl uh, implant placement can be done before the before the patient walks out from the chair even the tooth can be given to the patient and the patient can go that's a teeth in a hair a teeth in a day can be practiced with these with this digital systems this is all about your uh, digital uh, uh, digital guides or uh, surgical guides and coming on to the next now we have placed the implant in place apart from this we have certain things also that is fabrication a small insight will give you how do we fabricate this process processes that is first in the routine thing we used to have this we used to have this open tray coping and your closed tray coping we have you take this we do we, we do the we do the trays we do the custom trays we take we take we, we take uh, impressions of this all these things can be completed that is we have something called as a scan jigs. We can the healing cap can be removed, the scan jigs can be placed, and these scan jigs we call them as intraoral scan jigs. And this can be placed on into the patient, and we can go, we can with the help of an iOS or intraoral scanner, it can be scanned. And this data can be transferred to the lab. Then the lab will do the further steps. Suppose if we do not have and we do not have an intraoral scanner what to be done so we can't be practiced definitely we can do it even the lab in most of the lab it is all digitized previously the lab used to be filled up with plasters and all this now at times the the uh, the labs are like an it field it is so clear plaster free so even the, most of the labs are digitized nowadays so that is Suppose we don't have an intraoral scanner. So what we do is we go for an conventional type of impressions that is with an open tray coping or in close tray coping. We take an impression and send it to the lab. The lab pours the cast. After pouring the cast, they keep something called as on the cast. After the after cast has been done, they play something called as an extraoral scan jigs. This they place it on the on on the on the uh, on the on the analogs on the analogs and then do the extra oral scanning is done and by doing this they get a virtual cast on the screen once this is get once this is got and rest is easy for them there is no any plaster there is nothing over there and this they design it up on the software itself there are various designing softwares available in the market like an exocad three shape there are various mark interware there are many softwares available in the market nowadays so we adhere to it we do the we do the processes on the 
on the virtual processes itself directly on the with the help of a software this is how we do it we get the scan data we align this the intraoral scanners align align with the with the with the library of our of our uh, of the intraoral scan library libraries and then when these two when the when the when the data when the intraoral data and the and the the this the, the main portion is our the intraoral scan jig this gets aligned with the library over here and once this gets aligned the implant position automatically it pops up in the in the in the software once this one this uh, once the implant head is location is got on this we plan the tooth the process is planned over this and all the corrections are done suppose if you suppose you send in the intraoral scan data the physical cast will not be available with the in the lab so that what we do is we print the cast in the lab and then do the layering if we want a layering on the on the ceramic we do the layering after printing the cast suppose if we haven't printed off if you send the physical cast to us it the, the process will be placed on the cast and the and the finishing will be done on the cast these are all the digital options available or the digital workflow in the in implantology and it looks coming on past this coming on as i think i've given you a brief insight of what are the digital workflow in implant dentistry so taking all these into consideration i can conclude stating that it accurate implant placement in terms of aesthetics and function and complication it is, is and complication avoidance is the only goal for us and apart from this method it has the advantage of speeding the treatment process considerably without compromising on the accuracy of the design or placement so considering all this i can conclude stating that guided surgery should be the gold standard approach instead of a free hand surgery when perfect implant position is required and in a nutshell i can just tell you this in the nutshell so these are the things of the implant digital solution is all about thank you for listening till now thank you any doubts any questions